Hello everybody, this is Andrew Isley. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this tutorial on basic recording and editing. Uh, right now I've got Reason 5 open. Uh, I've got a subtractor and a Thor created. I have my Thor track uh, selected. And I have a patch called MS Feedback Base 1. This is in the base folder. And I'm um, just going to show you a little bit how to start recording. It's really very simple. You want to make sure that you have your track record armed. Um, since we're using the master keyboard input, uh, whenever you select a track, it becomes record armed. It's ready to record. Uh, the next step we need to do is, uh, since I don't have any kind of drums or percussion in my track already, I'm going to use a metronome uh, or a click track. So I'm going to engage the click track down here. Now, it's really important to always use uh, some sort of timing reference, whether you're using a Dr. Octorex uh, loop player playing some sort of percussion or drum line, or maybe you've programmed something in, uh, in the, um, the redrum or something like that, or, or you've programmed something with, with the Kong. You just need to have some sort of timing reference. Uh, if you don't, then you should really use a metronome. The problem is um, what happens is that uh, in your head, you may be playing at 120 beats per minute, but your song may be 140 beats per minute, or vice versa. Your song's 140, but you're playing at a tempo that's like closer to 120. Um, it will record and play back just how you, you played it, but it uh, you lose any kind of uh, special editing features like quantization. Uh, quantization is a method of time correction uh, that will tighten up your performance. and uh, basically moves it to the nearest um, note value, whether it's a 16th note or an 8th note. Uh, we can also engage the record quantize, which we'll look at in just a little bit. But uh, I just wanted to show you um, the, how we can basically do this. Now, the other thing on our metronome is the pre. I'm going to go ahead and gauge that. This will give us a four count or one bar lead in before it actually starts recording. This will allow me to, to uh, hear the the timing in terms of um, of our song. So I got it set to 140 beats per minute. I'm going to go ahead and hit the asterisk key, which will be record. We'll hear uh, four counts, and then it'll start recording. So that was a simple uh, sequence that I just did. It was very simple. Um, let's say I wanted to edit that or take a look at uh, my performance. Now I can go up here to this edit mode button or you can simply just double click on the MIDI clip that you want to edit. So once you do that, it shows you all of the notes and how they're laid out across uh, the eight bars that we just recorded. I can select each note. I can rubber band select around a bunch of notes to highlight them. Uh, if I wanted to transpose them, one way of doing it is to grab them like this. And I can click and drag them down to say C1. Incidentally, let me go back to the beginning. You can hear the timing isn't so great. I'm going to go back and undo that, uh, the moving of those notes. Um, let's say I, I select one of these notes right here. I've just selected this first note that's starting at uh, bar one. And uh, up here, I just want to point out what we call the inspector. Now the inspector is sort of a window into the information of that particular MIDI note. Uh, here we can see the position is at um, 11173, so that's bar, beat, division, or 16th note in this case, and uh, tick. The ticks are um, the smallest increment in terms of MIDI. Um, to the right of that you'll see the length of the actual note which is 2.127, and then it shows you the actual note number, which is C2, and then the velocity. Velocity is uh, equated to 
well, it's technically speed, but it's how we've played it. Um, the strength at which you strike the keys or the speed at which you strike the keys. The faster you strike it or the harder you strike it, typically the louder the sound is or the sound will change. Um, that's sort of what velocity does as a, as a controller or, or, or as a form of expression. Uh, in this case, we can see that um, my position isn't as tight. In fact, all of these are slightly off. But what we can do, if I hit Apple A and select them all, and uh, I just want to show you up here, you'll see the show tool window, also F8. That's a good one to remember. Uh, by hitting F8, it opens up our tool window. Now I can go over here to this tab, which looks like a, a wrench and a screwdriver, and I select that, and this is my sequence tool window. So these are my sequencer tools. Uh, in here, you'll see that I can transpose. Remember, I transpose that uh, by hand, by dragging it down. I can hit apply, and it'll move everything down. I'm just going to hit uh, control Z, or sorry, command Z and undo that. Um, but another thing in here is the quantization right there, quantize notes. Now, by default, it's set up for a 16th note, and the amount of quantization is 100%. You can scale this. So if you wanted it to feel a little bit looser, let's say you wanted to tighten it up but not make it perfect, uh, you could do 90% or 75%, and that would move it either 90 or 75% closest to the nearest 16th note, uh, which is cool. You can also add randomization to it, and there's the quantization while recording button, which is the same thing as uh, that's down on our transport. But I just wanted to point out uh, sort of while we're watching this area down here, if I hit apply, you'll see that they've slightly moved. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now if I go back and I select these, you'll notice that the position, there's no ticks. The ticks are always at zero at this point because I've sort of quantized it. So if we go back and listen to this sequence, it'll sound a little bit tighter. Whoops. So we can hear that uh, I did quantize it, but sometimes the quantization isn't perfect. So right there, that note is a little bit off. It should be at 3-1. So I could do it right here just by dragging this down to make that one. If we go back and listen to that same sequence again. So this one's off as well. Another way we can use is... Um, our tool palette, which is up here. Um, you'll notice we have the selector tool, which is what we're using. We also have a pencil tool. Pencil tools allow us to draw in notes. Uh, an eraser tool will allow us to erase notes. Um, you have a razor blade tool, which will allow us to uh, split apart a, a note sequence or a, a MIDI clip. Uh, we have a mute, which allows us to mute parts and unmute parts. We have the magnifying glass, and we have the hand tool. The hand tool allows us to move uh, around within the sequence. It doesn't. It won't move any any particular uh, MIDI data. It's just designed for uh, for navigation. And then uh, the magnifying glass. So let's say I wanted to zoom in around this section right there and take a look at that uh, particular note, that offending note. So that should be there, I'm guessing. Now another cool thing that we can do in terms of editing is uh, I want to move my, I could move my right locator over here, but I'm going to leave it there for a second. If I select my clip, and I hit the letter P on my keyboard, my computer keyboard, it will basically snap my left and right locators around the uh, selected clip and then immediately start playing. So if I had uh, multiples of these, let's say I had uh, the same sequence over here starting at measure 17, if I wanted to, incidentally I made a copy just by holding down option and dragging, just remember to release option last. You notice as I'm doing that, you get that little plus. If I don't have the plus, like if I don't hold down option, it just wants to move the sequence. 
So in this case, we wanted to uh, to make copies of it. But uh, getting back to the the um, select, getting our locators to to wrap around a selected clip. So again, I select the clip and then I hit the letter P. And that's essentially it. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll double click on this again. And we can use G and H to zoom in and out. You don't necessarily have to use your tool palette. I can just zoom in and out um, using G and H, which is really useful. So now I can see uh, the entire sequence again. And uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is our tools up here are automatically assigned to the Q, W, E, R, T of, uh, on, our, on our keyboard controller, or sorry, our uh, computer control. Uh, con sorry. The computer keyboard. <laughs> so Q, W, E, R, T, Y, and U. So I can quickly, like if I wanted to make a uh, draw in something or erase something, I can just quickly use these keys that are already hardwired in terms of the key commands. So that's pretty cool as well. So this is one editor that we can work with. Uh, there's a few other editors. If I click over here, I can, I can uh, switch between different editors. There's a drum editor and there's a Rex editor. Uh, the key editor, you'll notice, has the keyboard off to the side. Um, if I were to select a drum edit, it shows us, well, notes. This is specifically, this is the editor that would be used with a redrum, and we'll look at that once we're using the redrum. And uh, there's also a Rex editor, which shows you the slices. And we'll look at that, too, in, just, uh, in our next tutorial. But I just wanted to show you that it's possible to switch between three different MIDI editors. Uh, it's the same information that's displayed. It's just displayed slightly different in a different editor. Um, So I'm going to back out of this and um, let's say I wanted to demonstrate how to slice. So there I've just made a slice. So now those are two separate. If I wanted to join them together, I can highlight them. And that's what we call a rubber band selection. Notice how I get that sort of rectangle. And I can loop around anything inside the rectangle is automatically selected. Another way to select multiple items is to hold down shift while you're selecting them. So shift select. So with those selected, I can go to edit and you'll see join clips uh, or command J. And that will glue them back together again. So that is the basics of uh, recording and editing MIDI. Uh, we'll explore a lot more of this as we start to move through this book. But uh, that should get you up and running in terms of recording and, and basic editing. So in our next tutorial, we're going to take a look at sequencing drums with the redrum and with the Dr. Octorex loop player.